All right, I'm going to jump through this video as quick as possible. It's still going to take time. However, uh, I'll give it a whirl. So what I'm going to talk about is 114 cubic inch. I have got 117 componentry here and a 131 cylinder as a reference. But we're going to work around a 114 cubic inch engine that has failed a rear, a rear uh, cylinder head gasket. So I'll explain what goes on, what causes this, because um, there is indifferences on the head gasket itself, uh, letting go, failing through different reasoning of what's going on with behaviour in the engine uh, to cause a result of what. So basically, the composite head gasket on full squish uh, or full uh, tension with the cylinder head and the cylinders uh, torqued down via a stud and a cylinder head bolt um, there's 74 thou in that that I've measured off the um, with the verniers. So quite a thick head gasket. Um, the thing is with these gaskets and the setup from factory, which I'll just find. So basically, look, even when we're doing stock cylinder head um, setups on combos, we're always checking, which I generally take five thou off anyway. But even from factory, we are going to see a marginal, a marginal indifference. Um, on flat service, I've had 5,000 indifference, but we've knocked so much meat off the head to come back to a, a flat service. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. So then moving forward, what we do is when we go through our head gasket setup, we have got a service area that's going to accommodate a flat service on both sides for the head gasket, the, the, um, the torque down process, and we've got even torque across the area. Um, so what I'm going to go through, this is a lot to try and even just go through off cuff, but an issue that we do have with these is with the cylinder head on the M8, there's a generic casting for the M8s, which I'm going to go through right now. And this little sort of lump, hump, circly, overly thing that you see here, there's a reason why that's there. Now with Milwaukee 8, essentially there's an oil feed hole here. Now, that feed hole doesn't mean that it is applicable to every model of M8. The casting itself has got it, but what happens is when we don't use this, depending on the model, the blank or the shutoff for it is actually the head gasket, which applies the pressure of that oil feed directly onto the gasket surface area here. Now, what happens is with these motors, whether from factory we've had a... Um, torque, depending on the person, on the bike, in the moment, on the day. I call them Friday motors for a reason, but if the torque sequence um, is incorrect by any means of torque allowance or whatever, over time, we potentially can see that gasket lift marginally, which will see oil disperse from here and create its way into the cylinder, burning with combustion. Now, the thing is with these composite gaskets, there is a torque procedure to it. There's a settlement time between last torque um, set and then we settle, allow this to, to become um, settled in its way, in its form, and then re-torque that final setting again. Um, I do the same with these multi-layered steel head gaskets. This is an update product, um, far better for setting squish um, and working on compression ratio factors, depending on the combination. So being metal, it's metal to metal, it's seated. Um, we do a final torque spec. I still final torque at 15 minutes after as a check because there's more compression in the engines and I want to know that it has settled. We've rechecked. These are the same. Now, the problem is with these, if they're torque set from factory to X, Y, Z of what, we've got heat going in there, we've got cool down period, you know, whether you've obviously stored the bike, come back out, operating temp, ride, 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 shut it off. Something else we've got to factor in is when that actual start is put in at factory, how far that's been torqued, and then obviously how much it's been torqued on the cylinder head um, bolt. These are torqued down at 45 foot-pound, and these are torqued down as a final at 45 foot-pound. So if we see any difference anywhere, our clamp load, our force, our pressure um, in a square configuration, so to speak, if there is an uneven pattern of what, we will see something happen, um, whether... You know, the heat allowance that's going in, things are expanding, things are coming back to a cooling area. Um, there can be indifference, which can cause the gasket to leak. Now, these, I haven't had one leak in-house here as a repair. However, all teardowns on anything else 
and if this head comes off of the cylinder, I am swapping out and moving away from a composite gasket from factory and going to a multi-layered steel for the obvious reason of what I just said. Now, depending on the person who does what in-house at factory, nothing against anyone, it is a fast-paced, um, you know, more open tolerance area from factory. If they were to get in and do what we do when we build motors and spend the, you know, the adequate time uh, tensioning and correcting and machining and all the things that go in play hand in hand for performance, these bikes would cost a hell of a lot more. So we have got mass produced items, that's okay. Um, so that's what obviously can create that. Now with the firing that's on the inside here of the actual gasket, if this is damaged in any way, we're gonna see obviously a change of behavior of the motorcycle, um, especially when it comes to extreme heat um, you know, detonation in the engine, uh, just high operating temperatures, stuff like that. So we do see on teardown commonly scenarios that explain situations. So that's sort of that. Now, unfortunately, I've had a bike that left here that was cammed and it also had a dyno tune. I would say it's probably done four, 600 Ks, something like that. There was a head, ga uh, head gasket failure. Now, the thing was, if it was due to excessive heat, which unfortunately the customer was told by someone else that it was excessive heat in the rear cylinder. When we take these gaskets off, the actual um, the, the, the bonding on the actual gasket itself, on the surface it mates to the head and also the cylinder, these get really hard to pull off when they've had a lot of heat in them. You can see here on this one, we've got some marginal, um, you know, uh, what can I call it? I'm just trying to think of a word, but the actual, the, the brace that's sort of left behind, um, the sticky stuff that's stuck there. We've marginally got some of that because we have got heat here. This is an air-cooled V-twin. We don't have a cooling system in it. Some do run, operate on the exhaust side with a, um, a oil feed area to try and cool some of that stuff down. But in this case, on this bike being a 117, this didn't have an issue. It was built to a 131. So this is just a reference of what. But when these let go, you're going to see oil piss out the back here. Um, oil can also retract obviously inbound through your cycle of being a four stroke uh, on the actual down momentum of the piston we can see if oil wants to suck in go in and get contaminated with this that is a whole another part to it so unfortunately with the bike that left here there has been misinformation um, which has bum steered obviously the customer in an area of going well what's going on um, and unfortunately, I'm going to go through more of this, but I just I have to put this out there. There is there is scenarios of these obviously letting go for what reason or what. Now, when we do cam upgrades and, and tune that camshaft for the combination of what it is, whatever bike in the M8 uh, area, so to speak, um, the actual camshaft that's introduced is going to create obviously more power in the engine, more torque, more horsepower. We've opened up another area. Um, through lift and duration of a camshaft to work with the engine to create performance. So then we're seeing more bang for buck happening obviously in the cylinder. Um, it's leading off in a different performance area. So even with the one, uh, the bike that left here that has now gone somewhere else, the thing is with that, um, knowing that you've got that pressure happening, you know, that cylinder fill and that pressure happening in the engine, that piston is, is moving a lot of different mass than what it normally is. So at stock application, hey, we might not see a bit of an issue here. Um, but the thing is, when we're working with a, a more low docile combination of horsepower and torque out of what that is. But when we start moving in other areas, yeah, I'd like to excuse these and, and go with this, but to pull heads off and do everything else and get these in there, you're better off waiting for a build or if there is a failure on the head gasket to do so. So these things here all add up, okay? This gives us a clamp pressure allowance a final torque allowance, like I said, um, unfortunately from factory, some things just aren't the way they're meant to be. I didn't get to pull the other motor apart, so I couldn't even tell the tension that was on these. I've obviously had to go off what I know and everything else to understand and some photo stuff um, to give evidence of what's actually happened with the bike. But I would have noticed on teardown how tight the head uh, the head bolts were. On engine builds, I've even gone to take out um, standard uh, cylinder studs and when I go to undo them they're already ready to go there's not like a uh, and then it gets going it's like no nah, I'm good so that's what I mean the actual tension on that in the case itself um, which obviously stands quite uh, 
you know, it's quite a fair way up from the bottom to the top on what stretch allowance could be, um, how torque is working, how clamp pressure is, um, torque to yield, so yet torque these or tension these down at factory. But once we've done it once and we do another bike, these need to be taken out, excused, thrown out and replaced. So there's all these things of stretch and, and factoring of, um, of heat and stuff like that. So that's a bit of a part about that. Now, going back to the bike that left here, uh, the customer was told yet again, the dyno tune itself on the rear cylinder that's running really, really hot. Now, I've got photo evidence of what the teardown is at this other person's house that's done the teardown and spoke, obviously, uh, incorrectly about what the, uh, the diagnosis was. But the thing is, as well, our exhaust valves tell a massive telltale on how hot that, that actual chamber, that cylinder's going to be whilst operational. So the colour is a huge thing. Uh, what's going on, the, obviously the issue is on the bike that was torn down, if it had a massive, uh, I'm not going to say injury, but if it was to be overheating by any means, we're going to see a multiple, you know, things of check to understand what the heat's done to. One, a head gasket, two, exhaust valves is a big one. Um, and then anything else that we sort of see on the way as a witness. Now, heat in a cylinder. We'll just move on to another thing quickly. If there was to be... Um, an incorrect tune or a bike operating hot, we would definitely see piston skirts scored, damaged, abrasive to the cylinder wall. So obviously, um, cam side. So obviously, um, when the piston is going up and down through thrust motion on skirts, if we had expansion of heat, we would see that actually go further uh, into a damage zone. And we'd pick up on that. The rings themselves in the ring lands, they possibly could be, um, you know, because it's picked up a lot of material debris off the cylinder due to heat expansion, we would see the rings be stuck into the ring lens. It just depends. Um, there's these things that show parts of heat. Unfortunately, the bike that left here didn't have heat issues. Um, I don't know how far I need to go into this. Like, this is, this is just a literature-based thing. I don't want to, you know talk anyone down by any means however there is bad evidence in the wrong direction for what's going on with the bike that, that actually came from here if you guys can see this which is going to be a little bit hard just due to the lighting and everything else you can see marks but the thing is here there is ring chatter right and ring chatter th this has gotten hot right there is Obviously, a lot of glazing, different things going on. This is a stuffed cylinder. I'll tell you why. It come out of that bike, that motor. Right, but this is a perfect scenario I need to go off, is Robbie's bike. Because what happened with this was, it lost oil pressure. Obviously, it got hot, but hot, but having heat's heat. What happens is, well, I'll, hang on, I'll backpedal on that. Because what I want to go into something that cools the cylinder, right? Piston... Um, squirters right these little jets they work on 12 psi plus this squirts oil up into the bottom of the cylinder and while the um it's squirting it's squirting up underneath the piston as well it's a cooling component um and a lubrication component now by any means if one of these gets blocked with a little bit of snot in the back of it say it was a bit of um uh, silicon or just something like a, a metal filing or a, a chip of something if it gets in there and interferes with the pressurised area of what this actually squirts out and what it does for its job, it's going to lack oil on pressure. So if this isn't pressurised correctly, we're going to start running into non-lubrication, so to speak. Um, ring chatter will occur, scoring will occur. There's all these effects that take place. s, &S do a great up update. I do this on a lot of the bikes. Dual um, squirters and obviously running a, a, a PSI pressure of 12 as well as the other ones. But once these get going, they're squirting pressurised all up in the cylinder. Now, the other thing is too, with the bike that left here, the rear cylinder was the uh, culprit for the head gasket. But the thing is, with the cylinders being in, in your typical V, so there's one in the front, one in the back. Now, you've got to understand, if this was to be the back cylinder, we'll say we'll do it this way, right? So it actually looks like it's, it's on the V and the other one's here. Our crankshaft, if we're looking from the cam side, like this bike over here, we're rotating in a clockwise motion. The oil that sits in the bottom of the crankcase on the inertia of the crank, it gets picked up and splashed into there. 
Now, it's highly lubricated because with the front, on rotation, the splash will effectively go up, but to carry it around and go at the front cylinder, these little bad boys do its job for within reason. These do a better job. But these do the job of lubrication because the throw of the crank and the way the inertia and the throw of the oil is, that rear cylinder is getting plenty of oil going around. So yet again, there's quite a cooling component to that rear cylinder via oil. Yes, in the tune, we have adequate fuel to work with the cooling component. Like I said, in the tune, like everything else that I tune, it's the same stuff. We add fuel in and work it in a way to have a cooling component there because once we're in our V-twin, we've got airspeed coming in. We're seeing plenty here, but we're getting starved on the back. But all these things add up. If an engine was to be hot, we would see a lot of this stuff going on, like in Robbie's bike, nothing against Robbie. But also with heat, we would see expansion here, which would lead to a creation of, of, of thrust grab on rotation when the, uh, the crank's going around. And we would see a hell of a lot more of damage on there and everything else and whatnot. I'd check. There's so much that goes on. I didn't get to pull the motor down. But this is the literature of an engine and what goes on. When you tear it down, there is inspection, there is correction. I also go and check. Not that this is going to be overly accurate. But like I said, our flat edge on here is usually about 5,000 difference. We run a machine across that. It's, it's back to where it's meant to be. It's, it's zero. It's on the money. Um, there's all these little intricate things that go on. We obviously take out the shit-ass gasket that's in there that's quite thick so we can raise cylinder pressure for more performance by going to a different multi-layered style um, head gasket from Kometic. We stay with a 14 thou uh, base. We don't go to 10 because there's other areas I can go into. This is what's come from factory. Okay, we can't help how these are put together. They're a Friday motor, nothing against anyone. But please, if you're going to diagnose something and tell someone about something, give them the valid information like I just have, like I would to anybody that comes in here. You see all this stuff via video. You come in, you get to witness it. I do everything to comply to make sure you guys are above and beyond what it's to be to understand this literature, the damage, the repair, the cost, all the shit that goes on. It's all here. Now, while I'm here, guys, I've got some Spectro oil, which is some top, top shelf stuff. Um, if you guys at home are running a mineral base or whatever in your bike, there is stuff here for it. There's six-speed trans stuff, and I've got heavy-duty, full sin. I'm running that in the shop bike at the moment, which I'm obviously getting out and, and having a bit of drag racing with and everything else. And I'm running this oil, including the six-speed, obviously not this one because it's not for mine. But there is some good products here, guys. If you want to pop in, go for it. Factory 6-135 Allingham Street, Golden Square Vic, 3555, or contact... 03-44-08-4959. This is just ground floor stuff. You need to know. It gets explained to everybody with everything that goes on with their bikes because you deserve to hear the truth. And that is it. And you have witnessed it today. Thank you so much for watching.